Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this fold flat gift bag and then I've actually put the shaker window there as well. So I made this one during my Facebook Live and I'll show you there how it all folds flat. So these are perfect for making now and storing away and you can decorate these for any occasion. So whether you want to start getting organised and make some for Christmas, then you know now's a good time to start and you can you know store these away quite easily. So yeah, this is the one we're going to make. This is a different size as well. I'll give you the sizes in a moment and um, I'll list that in the title as well. And I've got a whole playlist dedicated to fold flat gift bags in all different sizes. So if you are looking for something or you've brought a gift and you you need that specific size just head to that playlist and you'll see all the sizes that I've got listed so hopefully you'll find something that would fit what you need but uh, yeah let's get into the tutorial and I'll show you how to make it okay so this one the final measurement is eight by five and a half by two and a half in um, width there okay so it's a nice size we were talking in the live saying you could fit like perfume bottles um, even some small bits of clothing in there as well which would be really nice so that's all of the dies and stuff that I'm going to be using we're going to get straight into the scoring of the gift bag so I'm using the craft card here you'll want two pieces and these are 11 by 8 okay so everyone will be able to do this one you don't need to have your 12 by 12 card stock either so what you want to do is along the 11 inch side you want to score both pieces at 8 and 10 and a half Okay, and then both pieces along the eight inch side you want to score at two and a half. Now if you want it to fold flat on one of the pieces only along the eight inch side you want to also score at three and three quarters all the way down. Okay, all these extra score lines I'm giving you now are if you want it to fold flat. Okay, and then on the other one all you've got is that one score line at two and a half which is what you would have done but because you've got the side piece here what you want to do with this one so you've got it here there's your two and a half if you just flip this one over and then score it three and three quarters past the first score line down to the second and then flip it over you'll have this score line here and it's just going to help you fold flat fold it flat and then I'm just popping it back in here and just line it up with a track there and just score because what you want you'll see this one here where we've scored it all the way down it's in this big rectangle here so this is the back and that's what's going to form this score line here you don't want that on the front you want that all nice and that's why on this one we miss that whole big section but we do need that score line still on the end there okay if you want you can pop it in normally where you've done the two and a half and then you could hover your stylus all the way down but it's just a bit easier to just flip it and do the score line that way then pop them both back in along the 11 inch side and you want to score at nine and a quarter down to that first score line because you would have done that one there and then again with this one nine and a quarter just down to the first score line there Okay, so that's all the scoring with the scoreboard. Now we just want to do a little bit more scoring. So I've just got my metal ruler and you want to score within this rectangle here. Don't go right over into your kind of half inch tab here, just within that rectangle there. And you're going to score from the bottom of this score line down to the bottom right and bottom left corners. So I'll bring it back up again so you can see. If you'd like to watch the live of this as well, then you can follow that. It's, um, it's on my Facebook channel, but I will link it below and um, you'll be able to see that as well. So now, there we go, you can see. So there's that score line, that nine and a quarter down to that line. And then I've just carried on a score line from that point down to the bottom left and right corners of this rectangle. Okay, again, you can really see it there. So I'm just going to do it on the other one. Okay, so that's all that scoring done. Now you want to fold and burnish all the score lines. Okay, with the half inch tab on the right hand side, you want to cut up these two score lines just to that first score line here. So that one and then that one and just remove that piece completely. And then if you take a nice wedge off of each side and you won't see any of that when we fold it in and then just take a chunk off of the corners there as well 
because that's our tab and we want that to all be hidden. So do the same again on this piece. Okay, so you've got the one there where you've got that nice big area with no extra score line. This one here, you've got the extra score line. That one you want to fold into a valley. So you've got your mountain folds for the bottom and then a valley for that one. Now you also want to start folding these because it's easier to do it now before we stick it all together. But where you've got this score line here, you want to pinch it to the top of the triangle part, just there. This side will start to come over and just let that kind of lift it over like that so it kind of folds over on itself. And you want every single one of those score lines to be a valley. So the triangle and that one. As long as they're all valleys, then you know you've done it right. So again, I'll show you on this one. So just pinch it to the top of the triangle. And as you get there, this side will lift up. Let it come all the way over and just kind of push that. And that is how it's all going to fold flat. Okay. Next, we need to attach these together. So I'm going to put glue on this half inch tab and I'm going to stick this one over the top. And then flip it all over, bring this side and again pop some glue on here and then bring this whole side over. And it should all lie nice and flat. As long as you've got your base score lines all lined up, everything else will fall, you know, kind of fall into place. Okay, so again you've got your one with the extra score line on the back there and then this is the front. So you want to fold the back one down first, then the sides and then the front one. So what I'm going to do is just add some glue onto these tabs here. Kind of let them just tack in place there for a minute. Hold that one down. Hold that one down and then I can pop glue on all of this piece here and then just fold that over. You can go in there now and really push down on that glue and by folding in the back one first you get a nice base you don't see any of the tabs so that's why I always like to sandwich the tabs between the base and the top pieces. Okay so that's now all dry so all you want to do to make it fold flat is just push in your finger on the tops of the triangles there and with your other fingers just push on that score line and it will kind of pop into place and then just let the whole thing lie down flat. And there you have it. So you could just go and batch make a load of these now, punch some holes, feed your ribbon through and you've got some quick bags. So you know they're really, um, they are quite fast to do. So next I am going to do my shaker piece on the front. You don't have to do this, but when I was doing again this in the live, it's, it's a really nice size shaker piece. You could just then put it onto a five by seven card. So, um, you know, you don't have to put it onto this. These are for the handles. We're gonna do those after I've done this piece here. So I've gone and done all of my cutting of the flowers. I've even done my little bow there. And that was using these ones here. Again, I did show you how to put those flowers together during the live. So if you want to see that kind of detail, then do check out that video. But it's the Bright Rosa Flower Border really beautiful you can see how you get like the two kind of layers to them and then I've used this one here from the firm border again that's bright rosa as well I'll try and link all of these things below and then I've got my card making magic rectangles here so I used the I think I said it was the fifth or the sixth from the the largest one so let's just take this one out here because I think this is the one that I used yeah it was so it's one two three four five yeah the sixth largest so if you've got them if not the rough size of this one or the exact I can give you is five and seven eighths by three and a half okay so what I did first of all I've got this white piece here which I'm going to cut my frame into and this is six and a half by four and a half so I'm just going to pop my die in the middle here and I'm going to get that die cut. Okay, so that one's done. Then I've got this piece here, which I'm going to cut my sentiment into. So I'm using the Happy Birthday, which is the same as what I've done on the live. And it's from the Bright Rosa Birthday Words. It just so happened that it turned out that I used everything Bright Rosa on that particular live. But um, you get these two here. If you don't use the frame and just use the detail, it will cut into this. And um, it just gives you a really nice effect. So I'm going to have it slightly higher because once all of the sequins kind of settle, um, you'll still see your sentiment. So I've got my frame to think about as well. But I think um, about there, make sure I've got it the right way up. 
but I think that looks good. Okay, so that's all in place, so I'm gonna just run that one through. Okay, so that's just fallen out of the die, which is great, you can see your happy birthday. So then I've got this piece of white, which is just slightly smaller, which I'm gonna stick behind, and it just really, you know, makes that sentiment pop. Now, one thing I didn't do on the live is I, I just added the glue just around the outside, and I wished I glued everything, because you can see some of the sequins, I've gone behind the actual sentiment. It's not the end of the world, but I am going to make sure on this one that I'm going to stick every bit of it down. So I'm actually, they're quite, you know, they're nice and thick actually. So I'm just going to stick this onto that white piece. Okay, so that's that piece. Then I can go back to the frame and I'm going to just grab some of my red tape and I'm just going to run some tape around the four sides of this frame and then I've just cut a piece of acetate which is slightly smaller than this piece here so I think it was four and a quarter by six and a quarter yeah so you just want it slightly smaller I'm just going to take the backing off lay that down Don't worry if there's still a little bit of stickiness coming through because you're going to attach this onto that eventually anyway. But now we've got our window there. And then I'm going to add some of my foam tape here. This is the dot and dab. This is the silicone foam tape. It's really good stuff. Um, but make sure you keep it between these because I dropped mine on some paper and you can see it's stuck to the side. So I'm hoping, yeah, this one's still okay. And I'm going to run this now along the four sides. Now whenever you're using any kind of foam and you're using it for shaker cards just make sure that when you stick the next one down you butt them right up to each other so none of the sequins will get through any gaps. Okay and then whenever you do shaker cards you usually always get some static so I like to just pop or get my um, anti-static buddy and just rub it all along the sides of the foam and it will remove any static and it will remove all the stickiness so that your shaker pieces will be able to move more freely and not kind of get caught up because sometimes they will stick. Now you might still get the odd one but this will really stop a lot of it sticking where you don't want it to and um, like I said it just does get rid of that static as well and then just with a little bit of paper towel just going to spray a little bit of rubbing alcohol, surgical spirit and then you can just take away all of the powder and also it will make your um, window sheet or your acetate sheet nice and shiny again. And you can rub the front of it once you put it all together. Okay so that's now ready for us to stick over this but first of all I want to lay down my sequins. You can if you want put them into there and then stick that on top. I'd rather do it this way so I'm going to put quite a few in there and then just spread them around. I've got a mixture here of iridescent ones, white ones and clear ones. I just kind of I was down to the ends of the mold so I think I just mixed them together but um, maybe we can get a few more in there maybe. Should we just dump it all in? probably get away with all of that. Don't go right to the edges because you want to be able to stick the foam frame onto that. That's about okay there and then I'm just going to take the backing off of this and then just very carefully lay that one down on the top like so. Now We've got that really nice shaker. You give it a whack, see now they all have settled to the bottom. So it does work by just going along the, the sides of your foam. Um, but now that's ready for me to stick onto the front of my bag, or you can stick that onto the front of a card, depending on you know what size your card is and your theme and stuff. But um, these are great for wedding card shakers as well, so you could have like on your wedding day inside and then all the colours of their wedding or something on the sequins, you know, so I'm just popping my glue all on the back there. Okay, so whilst that's drying, I'm going to make the handles. 
So I've got these two pieces here which are one inch by seven and seven eighths and they are going to go just inside of each of the side pieces. It will strengthen it but it will also hide the bottom of the handle. But if you're just using ribbon um, then you won't need to worry about that. So this is just a piece of copy paper that I cut in half. So I cut it at about four and one eighth. That's for A4 a size. If yours is um, eight and a half then you'll cut it at eight um, four and a quarter for example. But just cut it in half. And then you just want to curl one of the, so I'm doing the bottom right hand corner, just curling it up towards me there. Now, okay, now if you want to use a knitting needle or you can use during the live, I use this one here and I actually just do it myself. So if you, if you struggle to start it off to curl it, then grab something thin and start wrapping it around and you know, and then you can just slide it off. But I just, between my finger and my thumb, just roll it over because I like this really, really small. So if you wrap it around something, you're going to have a bigger handle. If you do it like this, then you'll get a nice thinner handle. So now once I've started it off, you want to make sure you're rolling it more towards this angle, towards the top rather than off that way because you want to get a nice long handle. You want to aim for about 12 inches. Get nice and taut. Don't let the end get bigger than the, the bit that you started with. Okay, and then you'll end up with your end, other end like this. So I'm just popping a little bit of glue and just roll that around to seal it up. And just grab your ruler there and let bang on. So you just roughly around 12 and then that's that one done there. So I'm just going to do the same with this one. Okay, and then I can see there they're pretty much the same length, but what you want to do now is hold them together. I've got to do this during the live and just snip them just so they're both the same, like so. And then if you just squash them very slightly and as you squash it, start to put kind of a curve into it. So you wanna start bending it around. Okay, so both my handles are done. So you just wanna kind of bend them so that you've got it facing towards you, like so, so you can stick it inside there. So I'm gonna actually stick it with my hot glue just because I've got it here to use for the flowers and it'll just be a bit a bit quicker for me so I'm just going to pop just cover about three quarters of an inch because that's one inch so you don't want to go any shorter I wouldn't say if, you, if you're not used to using hot glue then I wouldn't use it I'm just going to stick them just in there like so Otherwise, just use your normal liquid glues. You just have to hold it there a little bit longer, that's all. There we go, that's my handles done. So if you don't wanna see the handles inside, like so, that's when these pieces will come in handy. So I'm just gonna grab my other glue here. Just pop it inside. You just want it to cover the bottoms of the handles there. Okay, so you can see that it just tidies it up a little bit more and it strengthens that as well. So next is just for me to decorate it. So I'm just gonna pop some glue on my bow there and that can go just there. And then I'm gonna pretty much follow this one here because I really like it. So I'm gonna go and stick this all down. Okay, so there is the finished gift bag. I love it, I think it's so pretty and I love the, uh, the shaker part on the front there as well. All fold flat so I can now just pop them away until I need them. They, you know, they, they store easily and I've got a couple of like plastic tubs that I put lots of things in and I've got my gift bags in there. So um, yeah, they're ready to go and um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed making them. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, check out that playlist. It's got so many different sized fold flat and I've also got another playlist for gift bags that are like handbag style gift bags as well. There's just so many on there. So hopefully lots of inspiration for you and you give it a go. So thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye.